Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Tor and VPN. Do people kind of uh, dramatize how good Tor is? Do they make it seem like the ultimate solution when it's really not? I'm going to be talking about some of my experiences with Tor, some of the downsides and pros, as well as some of the pros and cons of VPN as well, helping you decide which one to choose and kind of bring some realistic um, ideas to the table. So let's talk about that. So guys, what exactly is the Tor network, the Tor browser? Well, essentially the Tor browser is a Firefox based browser where you connect to the Tor network. You can also connect to the Tor network through Brave because it has a Tor integration in it. And it also has some applications on mobile like Orbot and some other ones. So that's the way to connect to the Tor network. And the Tor network itself is kind of like a relay system. Basically, uh, if this is you, you might connect to a uh, Tor server in something like Seattle. And then that connects to something in Texas. And then that connects to something in the EU. And then that would connect to something in China. And then that itself would connect to internet. So it's kind of like an onion. And that's kind of where the name um, Tor comes from. It's called the onion router. And essentially, it's like a peeled network of relays that anonymizes and encrypts your internet connections so the source of the location cannot be uh, found or discovered, essentially. So what are some of the advantages of Tor? Um, well, some advantages are is that it's free. Anyone can use it, connect to it, and there's no cost at all. Another advantage is, is that it's easy to use. Simply download the browser for free, connect to it on Brave, or download one of the applications, and it's pretty easy to start browsing with it. Another good thing about it is that it is pretty anonymous. It's probably one of the best ways to become anonymous on the internet very quickly. Journalists, political activists, and stuff like that can use it. There is like some controversies around endpoints and stuff like that, and if people make malicious notes. Um, so there is an element of danger to it in some ways um, that you kind of have to think about. But most people generally in the privacy community regard it as a pretty good way of becoming anonymous online um, pretty quickly. Now, some of the disadvantages of Tor is that the speeds are awful. So we are initializing Tor right now. We are connected. And let's go to speedtest.net. So here we are with Brave going to speedtest.net. And let's see what kind of speeds we can get. Um, so like I said, usually I get around 900 for download, 900 for upload, and around 5 ms for ping. The amount of the slow speeds makes me feel like I'm like 15 years ago back in dial-up when you're connecting to the internet and it's like... Yeah, and this is a live speed test by the way. We are just waiting for that connection, which is probably why. Look at that ping, 380. And look at that download rate. It's gonna be in the single digits, which is not very good. Um, yeah. So this is what you're gonna get. Could you imagine using this on your phone? I'm using an ethernet gigabyte connection right now. So if you use this on your phone, it's gonna be even slower than this. Borderline unusable in my opinion. So this is a serious downside, and it's not really one that people on YouTube or on the internet really talk about that often. So for most people, this is a huge cost, and it makes Tor itself not even worth using at all. Some other disadvantages of Tor besides the slow speeds are that a lot of websites hate it. If you try to create a Reddit account when using Tor, it's pretty much going to shadow ban you instantly, and this is not an uncommon occurrence. Try using any other website. You're going to encounter problems with the Tor network because it's flagged. There's going to be captures, stuff like that. And there could be even uh, legal trouble with Tor as well. Um, if someone is participating in legal activity and you're on the e and you're the exit relay, uh, the traffic could be tracked to you and there could be some legal trouble there. I'm not too sure about this one, but it's a possibility, at least with the technology. Now let's go ahead and talk about VPNs and VPNs in a lot of ways are, you know, not considered the cool thing in the privacy community. Um, at least people who like Tor, you know, they say things like they're not anonymous and stuff like that. And they're, they're made by centralized companies and that they cost money. And some of this is true. VPNs do cost money. Um, that said, they aren't that expensive, especially if you pick the right plan. 
you keep track of your subscriptions and you make sure you're not overpaying for your VPN service. They also are centralized as well, but because they are centralized, that means you're gonna get really good server access and good speeds. Some of the VPNs I get and test give really good speeds. All right, so let's go ahead and do a speed test with Nord and compare it to Tor, show you what kind of speeds you can get with a VPN versus Tor, for example. So here we go. We have a 5 MS ping, which is pretty much unchanged, much better than Tor's 330 MS, and downloads are almost to 800. And like I said, without VPN, I could get around 900 usually, maybe a little bit slower on a slow day, but this is pretty much as good as you're gonna be able to get. TorGuard also gets good speeds just like this. These are probably the fastest ones I've been testing lately. Nord and TorGuard, excellent speeds here. Uh, so these are good speeds and way, way better than Tor. So the advantage of using a company is that they're using these good servers and the centralization gives you those good speeds. So is it gonna be quite as anonymous as a Tor network with all these different relays and bouncing all the way across the world? Well, maybe not, but VPNs, they do have promises to their customers. They promise not to collect logs and they promise to keep your data safe. And when the VPN fails at doing this, there's gonna be a shitstorm on the internet and people are gonna stop using that VPN. So until that has happened, your VPN is probably mostly safe. And it kind of depends on what you're doing with a VPN as well. If you're just using it to protect your anonymity from internet service providers to protect some of your data that way, and protect your internet generally while browsing online, it's gonna be a good enough layer of anonymity to protect you and keep your privacy safe. So when people say that VPNs aren't anonymous, it kind of begs the question, you know, who really is anonymous? No tool really makes you completely anonymous, not even Tor, but VPNs I think do give you a good enough layer of anonymity as is. So as long as you pick a pretty good VPN service, um, Pay attention to the pricing models and try to get a good deal. You could do that by clicking on my links. They should give you the best deals on VPNs. And be aware of the limitations of VPNs and that they are owned by companies and you might need to change one, change your VPN service one day. You should be pretty good. I think Tor is just simply too slow. And while it is very anonymous, um, there are still some questions with it and it's just not very usable seeing how most major websites will get mad at you for using it as is. Not only that, but on your phone, it's going to be incredibly slow. I think VPNs win against Tor. I think they're more usable. And while you might have to pay, ultimately, they give you a better experience online. And that's really what we're, most of us, I would say, are after at the end of the day. Anyways, guys, that's just my thoughts. And I'll see you again very soon.